I acknowledge personally what my role was, Hal certainly acknowledged his and Greg his in terms of the, of the transition and the growth and development of this institution. And I'm certain that whomever this fourth guy is going to be, that he will acknowledge his role. President Medique tells the story of his favorite cousin, Lydia. Lydia had lived in Miami for 20 years. Lydia lived only a mile and a half from FIU. Upon his selection as president, she called to congratulate Mitch, tell him how happy she was for him, how proud the family was of him, and what a great job she thought he would do as president. The only problem she had, the only question she had, is where is Florida International University? The new president obviously felt that the university needed more extended exposure. I pledge to you today that I will work with undivided energy, attention, and enthusiasm to make FIU not just another university, but a true paragon of academic and administrative excellence, a model for similar universities in this state, across the nation, and around the world. President Medik brought uh, another kind of uh, tenacity to the presidency. Almost from the beginning, he said, uh, we're trying to get a new course. This is where I'm going, and you can come with me. He invited everybody who was willing to work to, uh, to line up and to, and to follow. And he's from business, and of course that, of course, had many of the faculty like, what does this mean he's coming from business? The faculty was going a little bit in a different direction here or there. And uh, it was interesting because I, always, I think that he always wanted to be most respectful of the faculty. From day one, Mitch Medik has had incredible energy, incredible passion for the university, and he's had a vision which has managed to sustain itself, largely because the vision tapped into where the faculty wanted to see the university go. We started 20 years ago, opened our doors 20 years ago today, and we are, as far as we've been able to determine, the youngest university ever to be invited to that exclusive club called Nostalgic. He set this place on, on fire. Uh, he, he, people began to realize that this guy isn't just a businessman, but he's a renowned scholar. He had written several books. He knew academia, and in fact, I, as I've very quickly, the faculty embraced him, and I thought that was uh, just terrific. He believed in dreams, and he had a dream for this university. And we're going to be a major university. We're going to have 30,000 students, and at the time we had, what, 15 or so. And we were going to have a law school, and we were going to have a football. I mean, I mean, he went on architecture and PhD. And the person we're sitting next door and says, oh, God, dream on. Another Don Quixote here, you know. And, uh, but I tell you, I must say, he could really visualize a major university that, you know, made a major impact to this uh, community. The cultural diversity found in the school is absolutely unbelievable. The reason I chose FIU was because it has a great environment, uh, great facilities for students to uh, reach their goals. We feel that we should be one of the leading public universities in the nation. Dr. McDeek allowed us to dream much higher than we ever thought we could reach. When he came in and he said that he wanted us to be the UCLA of, of the South, a lot of us thought, well, we want to be different, but what he was allowing us to do is to think very, very high. We, of course, saw continued growth of the university, expansion in significant numbers uh, of doctoral degree and other graduate programs, uh, and expansion of the faculty in a variety of disciplines. Every great city needs a great private, a great public university. Uh, our mission is just that, to become that great university. And my faculty really like sit down to talk to you. The quality of the education is awesome. And I can tell you this, they won't be asking F.I. who anymore. Never again. Until Mitch got here, we had not raised very much money uh, for the foundation. And a university gets state support, yes, but it cannot ever be more than just an average university unless it gets external support. And that's external support through grants, uh, sponsored research, and it's external support through foundation and gifts. 
hurricane ender hit and wow what an experience that was we all looked around and, and saw the devastation that was just absolutely incredible we sort of uh, mobilized the hundred students that were there we went to the bookstore and we got t-shirts that said FIU and we took all 100 students into the ballroom and we started making phone calls. And the next thing we knew, within that week, we had 350,000 pounds of supplies. There's never been a better time to be at FIU. Well, the Monique years have just, I mean, they speak for themselves. I mean, we've you know, more than doubled in student size. Our budget has, has astronomically grown to $550 million. Um, graduate programs, uh, you, you name it, it has happened in the Medici years. Uh, good, strong leadership. I think leadership uh, comes in the, in the form of, of having a vision, you know, knowing where you want to go, hiring the best people you can to make that happen. I think that's where, where Mitch has uh, done so well. FIU is growing, not only in its size of its campus, but with the football team and the larger student body, it's becoming a real campus. To see thousands of students and the faculty all supporting football as, as uh, strongly as they did was a surprise for me. There's no question that someday there will be a football team. Now, we may never, we may not see that day, but Florida International University will have a football team. excitement into the school and as we're doing here in Pantherade. Woo! We all know President Medique's mission for this to be one of the nation's top urban public research universities and I certainly think it will achieve that. The ultimate, uh, I think, test of an institution is what happens to your graduates and it is clear that this community and outside communities have accepted uh, our graduates uh, with flying colors. Clearly we are going to continue to grow in enrollment. My guess is we will get close to 50,000 students. Uh, Biscayne Bay campus will be fully developed. The only thing that I feel sorry about is that I'm not 15 years younger because I'd like to be here 15 years from now to see where this place really is. I'll be on the sidelines somewhere. I'm standing just a few feet from a torch that is dedicated to the memory of Senator Ernest Cap Graham. Senator Ernest Cap Graham in 1943 that first presented a bill before the Florida legislature to establish a public university in South Florida. Sixty years later, the university is one of the fastest growing young universities in the nation. Florida International University has experienced 30 extraordinary years of progress. We became a Research One University, which is the top of the line research university as gauged by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. And we added a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa, the most distinguished academic fraternity in the American higher education world. We've also added a law school, architecture school, and a football team, and dozens of doctoral programs and master's programs. But you can say that's a lot. Maybe it is, but it really is a beginning. It's a beginning of the next 30 years. The real story of our university, however, has not unfolded in our classroom or in our laboratories, of which there are many. It has really unfolded in our community, both in our South Florida community as well as in the state, the nation, and indeed the entire world. And that is part of the story of what's going to happen. Florida International University at 50 will experience an even greater transformation than those we've experienced during the first 30 years. At last, the vision of President Perry of a university that was truly needed to serve the needs of our community will be realized.